Well, good morning. Welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thank you for joining me today. We're starting a brand new walk in something we're going to call looking forward to the promise. Looking forward to the promise. It's based on some verses at the very end of the second epistle of Peter. So we're going to be looking at first and second Peter these next few uh, days as we wake up in the Word. So thank you for joining me. And this is a passage of Scripture, two books that I haven't had in my personal devotional life for a long time. So I want to go back and read through those, especially considering the times we're facing these days. And knowing that, I really felt drawn to it because I feel like we may be on the cusp of even more persecution against Christians in the world. You know, some, uh, some friends of mine who watch primarily on Facebook, not as much here on the YouTube channel, uh, are all around the world and some dealing with different levels of persecution and some here in the United States who thought we would always be free from that are now facing the idea that certain structures in government, certain people who want to have power in our nation really hate Christianity and hate Christians and want to silence us, even persecute us. That may come as a shock to some of you, but I believe that's something going to be revealed all the more in coming days. Well, this is what was happening in the day in which Peter wrote his first letter. And it wasn't until Nero that the persecution of Christians had reached far beyond the confines of Judah. Rumor had it that Nero had burned Rome so that he could rebuild it the way he wanted to, you know, make my city, make Nero city. Um, needing a scapegoat to divert attention from himself, Nero decides he'll blame the Christians. Blame the Christians and begin the systematic persecution of all those people of faith. Friends, don't be surprised as you hear more and more and more. We've seen it come out from supposed mainstream news media sources even, as well as teachers at universities with big names, that the problem is Christianity and the problem people are Christian. That wave is building once again because Satan hates you if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And once again, we see in various places around the world that hatred for Christ and his people popping up again and resulting in violence and even the martyrdom of many believers. So friends, don't be surprised if Nero is on his way back. But in this particular case, Jesus had prepared Peter for all this that was to come, all this trouble, this tribulation that was to come, and now Peter is going to prepare others through these two beautiful letters. There are a lot of warnings in here, some advice for us in these days, how to discern false teachers and false prophets, how to live in the joy of our salvation today, even though we're facing trials. So Peter wrote this particular epistle right around AD 63 or 64, right on the eve of Nero's persecution. Keep that in mind, especially as we get to the second letter. You know, Emperor Nero died around AD 68, but not before Rome had put Peter to death. With those thoughts in mind, I want to read to you uh, just the introduction and all the way down through verse 9 as we just get ourselves acquainted with Peter's first letter, which sounds, even though it was written to people in the first century, sounds very much like words of encouragement to those of us in the 21st century. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, and I would add unto the ends of the earth, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed at the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, 
may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Do you notice how he ends this? Church, yes, you're facing trials. You're facing difficulties, things you don't understand, things that perplex your very soul. Even as you try to discern what's going on through news channels that are sometimes prejudiced against the truth and others that seem to overwhelmingly cause you to worry and fret. Friends, even in times like this, even if you're one of those at the very heart of some of the turmoil that's taking place in our world, you have something now that the world can't take away from you. It's an inexpressible and glorious joy, Peter says. That joy comes from inside. It comes from the Holy Spirit's residence in your heart. The world can't steal that. The world can't take it away. It is yours. Even if they're throwing rocks at you today, they can't steal your joy. And the, the, glory, of, the glory of all of this is the fact that Salvation is not something you're looking forward to, something that you've got to work hard right now to earn, to eventually receive, because you, you've checked off all the boxes. No, the salvation is by the grace of God through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We've received it because he's done all the work. You're not working toward it. You're experiencing it. That's why he says you are receiving it's an ongoing, continuous thing. It's in present tense. It's right now. It's not something I'm hoping for for later. It's right now that I am receiving the goal of my faith, the salvation of my soul. And that's what we rejoice in even today. So friends, even though the storm clouds outside might look a little dark, you can rejoice in the presence of the Lord on the inside, the inside of your heart, the inside of your soul. Because that's where the Holy Spirit not only resides, but gives you the strength and the power to continue. And that's what we're going to seek as we look through these two short letters that Peter wrote that are so full of powerful words for today. So I hope each and every morning you'll join me as we wake up in the Word right here. Now, if you haven't already, would you subscribe to the channel and would you maybe like it and Join in with this little group so that you never miss another one of these. Each and every morning, we're going to do this until Jesus comes or until I can't talk anymore, <laughs> whichever comes first. So God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow as we wake up in the Word.